Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hemingway Tips, Maintenance, and Repairs. Today, I'll be guiding you through the process of inspecting or replacing a Hemingway pedal assist sensor. And in the second segment of this episode, I'll show you how to change your SSP settings through the display. These settings will allow you to adjust the initial burst of power when you initially engage the throttle or the pedal assist. Before we head over to my shop and get started, I'm gonna show you a list of tools and items we're gonna to need to complete the job. Most importantly, you're going to need a crank arm puller like this one. It's a relatively common and inexpensive tool that can easily be found through Amazon or your preferred bicycle retailer. I provided a link to the crank puller I'll be using in this video's description. Beyond the crank puller, we're going to need an 8mm or 5 16th Allen wrench to remove the crank bolt. Other items you will need are a flathead screwdriver, a couple of Q-tips, a few drops of motor oil, a medium to large size artist brush, a small block of wood, and a medium sized hammer. Another item I'll be using are these portable handlebar jacks that I acquired to firmly hold the bike off the ground while making my repairs. Their compact size and magnetic interlocking design are a welcome addition to my portable toolkit. I also provided a link to these in this video's description. All right then, let's pop on over to my mobile workshop on wheels and get started. I now have my bike flipped over, firmly sitting on the handlebar jack stands. I also placed a section of packing foam beneath the seat. The Hemiway's pedal assist sensor is located on the left side of the bike, opposite the chain ring pressed against the frame next to the bottom bracket. There is a red LED indicator light located on the bottom side of the sensor. This light should be illuminated whenever the bike is powered up. It will blink in unison with the sensor as it's being rotated. As you can see, I have the power on and a proper signal to the controller. If the light was off, it would likely indicate an error caused by either a severed wire connection or a faulty controller or sensor. The Hemiway pedal assist sensor is a cadence type with a speed sensor located inside the controller. As you pedal forward, a series of planetary magnets send signals to the controller. These signals are then translated by the controller to provide proportional power to the hub drive. Basically, the faster you're pedaling, the faster you're going to go. Please see Hemiway Tips Maintenance and Repairs Episode 1 for more information about your Hemiway's pedal assist features and customizable settings. A link to this episode is shown in this video's description. Although there are no issues with the sensors shown here on my bike, the information provided in this video will guide you through the process of replacing a defective sensor nonetheless. In this episode, I'll be removing and inspecting mine for accumulated dirt or debris. Now that I've taken a look at the indicator light, I need to turn the power off to prevent any chance of accidentally engaging the controller or the hub drive while I work on the bike. Before getting started, we need to disconnect the sensor cable from the controller. The connection was initially tucked up away inside the bike's down tube by Hemiway technicians. I simply rerouted mine along the bottom bracket for easier inspection and access. To gain access and remove the sensor, we must first remove the crank arm. The crank arm is fastened to the bottom bracket's tapered spindle with an Allen bolt here. We need to remove this bolt with a 5 16 or 8 millimeter wrench before we can use the crank arm puller tool. As previously mentioned, an 8 millimeter or 5 16 Allen wrench 
will do the job. With the 5 16th wrench being slightly smaller than an 8 millimeter. Once the bolt is loose enough, you can use your fingers to finish it off. Next, we rotate the threaded portion of the tool so it sits flush with the inner plunger. The crank puller I'm using consists of three components, the inner silver plunger, the outer threaded black band, and the closed end wrench handle. I use my fingers to rotate the threaded portion inside the crank arm. I then use the handle to finish it off. A tight fit is not necessary here as this component of the tool only needs to be deep enough to hold the puller in place. Next I use my fingers to rotate the inner plunger clockwise until it meets with the edge of the spindle. Once the inner plunger has come in contact with the spindle, I use the wrench handle and rotate clockwise pulling the crank arm towards me until it is removed completely from the spindle. Now that the crank arm is removed, we can use a Q-tip dipped in a small amount of motor oil to apply a lubricated coating to the tapered spindle. This will help as we carefully pry the donut shaped sensor away from the bike's frame with a flathead screwdriver so we can inspect it or replace it with a new one. Now I can work my way around the gap between the donut shaped sensor and the bottom bracket carefully using a flathead screwdriver to pry the sensor away from the spindle. As you can see, there is a bit of dirt that has accumulated inside the sensor. Using an artist brush, we can carefully remove the dirt before reassembly. Now we can begin to reassemble the sensor and the crank arm. I gently press the sensor in place, making sure the sensor wire is located at top dead center. Next I use a block of wood and hammer to gently tap the sensor in place until it is seated tightly against the bottom bracket. Making certain that I've properly aligned the notch and the pins, I reconnect the sensor wire to the controller. Next, I properly align the crank arm and use the wooden block and hammer again to carefully tap the crank arm tightly in place. Now I hand tighten the Allen bolt before I finish up with the wrench. I finish up with the wrench and tighten it firmly. Being careful not to over tighten and strip the threads.
That's it. And we're all set and ready to test the sensor. First, we need to power up the bike and check the sensor's LED indicator. The light is red. We can test the sensor by pacing the bike in level one, carefully rotating the pedals forward to engage the sensor. Now that you've inspected or replaced your sensor and you're ready to ride, you might want to take a bit of time to change your bike's initial burst of power settings and I'm going to guide you through the process. The settings I'm about to show you are going to affect the amount of power delivered to your hub drive whenever you initiate your throttle or engage your pedal assist. First, we must get to the display menu with the passcode by powering up the bike and giving a long press simultaneously to both the plus and minus symbols, entering them twice in succession with a brief delay in between like shown. To enter the 0510 passcode, we use the I button to enter the number and the plus button to change the number. Since the first digit is a zero, we simply need to press I to enter and bring up the second digit. We now press the plus button five times to bring up the number five. Press I to enter and bring up the third digit. Press plus once to bring up the number one, then I to enter and bring up the final digit zero, then I to enter. Now we press plus till we scroll up to the seventh or SYS menu. We then press I until we scroll up to the SSP menu. Now we can use the plus and minus buttons to scroll through the four different settings, with four being the gentlest and one being the strongest. I prefer to keep mine at two. Once you've decided on your level, simply press I twice to get back to the main menu. Thank you kindly for joining in. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to get more episodes. Next up, I'm going to be working with a new for 2022 Anyway model. So stay tuned and happy trails.